So our topic today is uh, calculating the solar potential of rooftops in, um, in cities. Uh, at this point, I'd just like to say uh, thank you to our mentor, Adam Green, who supported us throughout this project, and also to Tristan and Marcus for their help and, and comments on the project as we went through. What are we talking about here? Um, as you may know, or maybe you don't know, some cities in the world uh, produce solar energy potential maps. So what is that? That's basically a top-down view of a, um, of a city, uh, usually overlaid on, a, on an aerial map, and it shows for every building in that city, uh, for every roof, uh, how suitable it would be to install solar panels there. So if you install solar panels there, how much energy could they produce? Is it suitable or not suitable? And this is done uh, by cities um, uh, in order to make decisions in which areas maybe this uh, sort of investment should be prioritized, but it's also useful information for homeowners uh, or, or building owners to decide, is it economically feasible to install solar panels? It's, it's basically a, a first view on that before going into more detailed analysis. So that's a solved problem, right? We don't, that's already done today. Um, but there is a problem with that. The way that's normally done is th using 3D data, um, uh, normally LIDAR data, and combining that with other urban planning and information. Um, and that works fine. Uh, the way they do it is they build 3D models from that, then they calculate where the roofs are, they calculate the angles of the roofs, the size of the roof. And based on that, uh, they produce these maps. And the problem with that is really just quite clear. You have to collect the LIDAR data, and that's uh, quite expensive, and it's not available for most cities in the world. So this can only be done where you have that data available. So our question was, well, can you can a deep learning model, or more specifically, uh, a computer vision model, um, do this more easily? And what would this model have to do? It would take uh, a visual representation, um, so in this case, aerial photographs, and would try from that visual information in that image to identify where the buildings are, where the roofs are, and then try to classify those roofs, again, just on the visual information in that image, how suitable they would be um, for solar. And then that could be used in a further step to estimate the solar potential of a particular building or the solar potential of, a, um, of an entire city even. So we have some good news. The city of Berlin is very, very generous with their open data. We're very thankful for that. Uh, they produce aerial images almost every year, so, and they still have theirs up from 2013. And they have also, um, in 2013, uh, produced a solar potential map based on the LIDAR process that I described. So they went through this effort and we extracted this data and converted this data and combined this data. And by equal use of Python code and cursing quite a lot, we managed to do get out what you see here, which is a basically labeled data for a computer vision model. This represents, if you look on the right side, the um, four categories that the city of Berlin has defined. Um, Background is black, so that's not a category. That's no roof, right? And the other categories are here in grayscale with um, lighter colors um, indicating more suitability for solar. So the white patches are very, very suitable for solar ins installations. So that's great. That's how we can feed it into a model. You'll see later in the presentation, we use colors just because it looks nicer, but models like these, these black and white, uh, well, these grayscale images. So brilliant, right? But, well, hang on. Look in the top left corner of the image. The mask indicates there's a building, but if you look really closely, there's actually no building there. And a lot of the data looks like this. Um, I mean, you can clearly see there are buildings there with roofs that may be suitable, but there are no labels. Maybe there were no data available for that region. There are also construction sites. Um, if you've been to Berlin, you know there are a lot of construction sites, and often the labels still have the building that used to be there or the building that was later constructed, but the model just sees a construction site. There's also just mismatches, things that are not updated. There's, there's no, again, no building here in the bottom right corner. It's probably demolished at some time. It looks, I mean, grass has grown there. It's, it's been a long time ago, but the map is just not up to date in, in some areas. And there's also just wrong labels in there. For some reason, this railroad track is labeled as a building that's very suitable for solar. Um, a lot of railroad tracks are labeled that way. We're not really sure why, but it's it's a problem, right? So, okay, that's bad, but actually it gets worse. Um, most of the map is empty as far as, you know, a computer vision model is concerned. Um, basically, after we extracted the data, we had 100,000 tiles. Almost half, 45% of those contain no buildings. 
the forests or lakes or you know parks there's just no building there okay and another 40 percent so that's 85 percent in total another 40 percent have just a few roofs just less than 20 percent of the area covered by roofs so that means as you see here on this um on this image almost 92 percent of the map contain no roofs contain no usable data for for the model and what's not quite as clear from this uh, picture but what is equally important among the remaining classes so the true classes uh, very suitable the highest class is four times as frequent as the next frequent class so it's even even these subsets of the classes themselves are unbalanced and as you'll see that there really is a difficult problem but i'll stop being negative and focusing on whether data is bad we did actually manage to train models with this we got some uh we got some decent results that we think are actually useful and jeremy's gonna take us through how we did that and where we ended up Many thanks. Many thanks, Daniel. So, yes, indeed. So, despite all the bad news that Daniel has announced, we are still able to do something. So, more specifically, yes, more specifically, um, what we are the best at so far is that if you look at a part of a city, we can calculate with quite a reasonable accuracy the available surface for the best installation of solar panels. And this is quite satisfactory. So, if you are a city and we can at least tell you where to focus your effort in a city. And all you need to provide us with is aerial photographs of your city. So let's talk about the machine learning models that we have been using. So we have the first type is a pixel classifier. So we have two classes of models. The first type is a pixel classifier. And so it's a unit with a pre-trained uh, backbone in the unit. The first type of uh, cl pixel classifier is a roof classifier which means that on a picture, the model tells, you, tells us, does it belong to a roof? Does it not belong to a roof? Second type is a multi-class pixel classifier. The model tells us whether it belongs to a roof and if it belongs to a roof, to which kind of roof category it belongs. And of course, as you can expect with such models, it produces images which are quite pixelized. And you can see this in the upper image, the, the blue and yellow ones. And this is the kind of output we have to live with if you work with this type of model. So the other type of model that we are using is an object detector and a classifier, namely a mask CNN from the Detectron 2 and other colleagues have used that model as well. So what this model produces is bounding boxes and on roofs that we are detecting. And on the roofs, we are also producing an overlay, a mask, which tells us exact, the exact location of the roof. The bounding boxes provide us, a roof, provide us with a roof category. Okay. As I said, the first thing that we've done is a roof classifier. And how does it look like? So we take a picture, which is the one on the right. In the middle, you have the true masks. And to the left, we have the prediction. And as you can see, it's not that bad. And if actually on a clean data set, and as you have heard, this is an issue, we actually have quite good metrics. So I will not go, go into details in the metric, but accuracy is, of course, means nothing in that context, considering that we have a lot of, lot of emptiness. But the ROU, the intersection of a union, which measure, measures how good a mask, a predicting mask, fits on an actual mask, it's 60 point, uh, 60%. It's not that, it's actually quite very reasonable. And to the point where we decided to use that truth classifier to pre-sort and pre-cleaned the 100 tiles that we had. So we looked at the worst losses on the prediction of the roof classifier on these 100 tiles as the detector for bad masks. And it worked actually quite well. And uh, let me tell you why we've done that. If you want to clean 5,000 pictures, it takes a day. Right, and we have 100,000 to clean. So this was a good step in that direction. Let's talk now about the multi multi-class pixel classifier. As, as I've told you, what we are good at so far is predicting the surface area for the best of a roof available of the best quality. And uh, here, the best quality is a very suitable roof uh, from the German classification. Uh, so for that model, we are predicting 4.456% on surface of area and on a test set in Berlin. And the actual value is uh, 4.9 in that area. So this is 
very reasonable for the other area. If you think at the type of data we have, they are minority categories within the roofs categories. So it's not surprising that we are worse, if not frankly worse, on the uh, bad categories, the not suitable roofs. We are actually producing some, but it's so low what we're producing that it's not visible on the graph. So this is for the multi-class pixel classifier. And if we look at the mask RCNN, so the object detector, here we are predicting for the best category 4.94 of very suitable roof in terms of surface area, while the true value is 4.9. And this is like very satisfactory as a result, but for all other categories, it's simply not good, right? This is clear. Let's talk a little bit about metrics or more specifically, let's not talk about metrics. If you want to go into details of the metric, I'm happy to do that. And I will be very happy to do that with someone specialized in computer visions, but they are just bad, right? And I can talk about at length why, we are why and where we are failing, but this is not a topic here. Uh, just believe me when I'm telling you that like, it's not as satisfactory as a roof classifier before. Let's have a look at predictions, which are more exciting. Predictions, so these are predictions for the multi-class pixel classifier. And as you can see, in terms of proof prediction, this is quite good, right? If you look at the first line of prediction, like you recognize the roof shape, there's no debate there. But on the first line, you see a lot of orange while the roof is supposed to be yellow, right? The best category we are producing, predicting the lowest, uh, lower category. So it's not great. If you look at the second line of prediction, all the pictures are essentially of the second best category, the, the pink one. And what the model does actually is categorize buildings per orientation. So if you have an orientation north, south, it is predicting a second best category. While if you have an orientation of the building south, uh, east, west, it's predicting the best category. Let's have a look at that picture. The first, the first row as well for the multi-class pixel classifier. The building in pink is second best category. And if you look at the prediction, it predicts the best category. And except on the left side, the second best category. And if you look at what it corresponds to on the original picture, it corresponds to a roof which is very, very steep and shadowy. So again, the model is providing us between bracket more information than expected, whether it's an artifact of bad data or whatever, we cannot say. A bad prediction here, roads, train tracks are bad. So there's nothing we can do about that. We get a lot of false positive. Let's have a look at some prediction for the mass car. Um, so for the mask R, as, as I've mentioned before, um, for the mask R, as I've mentioned before, uh, the lowest category, meaning the not yellow, are often not well predicted. If you look at the arch on the left picture, the bottom part of the arch is lowest category and not predicted well. So the same thing on the second picture, the buildings in, in, in uh, purple are simply not seen by the model at all. And let's talk about one last problem, typical to Germany to some extent, the allotments, the Schrebergarten. The Schrebergarten are either badly labeled, like in the second line, or in the lower roof category, so rarely seen. So the predictions are bad. For those, there's so far, there's nothing we can do. We get bad predictions. Okay, what are the limitations there? The model has learned from its label data, right? This is a problem. Like we've cleaned as much as we can, but there's an upper limit to the amount of cleaning we are willing to do. Let's be honest about that. <laughs> the second thing is that the model has learned from only from aerial photography, and we would like to have some more flexibility in there. And also the model knows only the roofs in Berlin. If you look in Leibniz, Austria, and look at a prediction on a satellite photography in Leibniz, Austria, it's not that great. And uh, we would like our model to be able to learn about roofs there. What needs to be done? Data cleaning, data cleaning, data cleaning, data cleaning. This is the thing to do, to improve the model. We've done this several times, and each time we've done that, we've noticed significant improvements. The other problem, as you have seen, the prediction for the lower classes are bad. So dealing with class imbalance, whether for the lower classes or for the roof, no roof, is a major issue here once we have clean data. Maybe a better model is necessary. So of course, Tristan will be happy if we talk about transformer and I'm sure he's commenting about that in, in the chat right now. And 
Maybe also working with a model pre-trained on aerial photography might be a good thing and such models exist. And meanwhile, we would really like to end up being able to produce in Jakarta a proper mask for that and make prediction in Jakarta. But for the moment, we're not there yet. As you can see, the math predicting masks is not that great. Many thanks for your attention. Uh, many thanks for the work with Daniel and Kostin and many thanks Kostin.